Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning, and welcome to worship. We continue our Belong series this week. And so I just wanted to say that it is good to have all of you here. And it's not just that I hope that you will get something out of the service today, though I hope that you will, but that your being here makes an impact on everyone around you. Your voice fills out our singing and your prayers join everyone else's to make them even more full and authentic and uh, an offering to God. It is good that you are here, however you join us, either here in this space, of course, but also on TV and Facebook Live. Welcome to you as well. We have some announcements today. Last week, we all got to enjoy breakfast thanks to the OSL Foundation. We're so grateful to them for all of their work, not just for the breakfast. But I wanted to um, just share a quick reminder that in the month of November, children eat breakfast and Wednesday night dinner free here. So I hope that you will come and take advantage of that. Even if you're typically a Sunday person and aren't here on Wednesday, why not stop by and just see what that's all about too. This morning is Cross Gen Sunday. I hope that you had a great time making your make and take snack plates. I got to see a bunch of them and you did a really lovely job. I can't wait to hear about how you share them. Today is also Stephen Ministry Sunday. We'll hear a little more about Stephen Ministry from another perspective at Offering, um, but we're also grateful for the ministry that Stephen Ministers are doing here every week. Your gifts make all of the ministry that we do here together and do for those beyond these walls. The impact that we make together is huge but we cannot do it without you. So I just mentioned this today as an opportunity to uh, check and make sure that you're up to date on your pledge or commitment to giving this year. And if you're not sure, you can always call the church office and make a quick catch up gift. We appreciate you doing that. And thank you for your generosity. If you're looking for a way to make a difference with your time, there are opportunities to serve and they're listed on the back of your bulletin, but there are just too many to mention. So I encourage you to check those out today as well. But now, we continue with our worship, so I invite you to please stand as you are able, as we confess our sins. We come to this place of worship to hear the promise of God's presence with us. It is here that we are reassured of God's forgiveness and love, embraced in enduring grace and hope. Let us turn again to God, confessing the truth about ourselves. God of grace. We belong to this family we call the church. But sometimes 
We wonder if this is a place we deserve to be part of, if this is a place where we can be assured that we are loved. Here, we see ourselves for who we are, sinners who have fallen short of what you have called us to be. We have not always said the right things or done what you have called us to do. We have not reached out to others who have needed us. We have failed to be your church, your people, your example of love to those around us. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have fallen short, for the times we have drifted far away from you. God knows the mistakes you have met, that you have done. But God is as close to you today as God has ever been. Come to this place knowing that this is where you belong. You are forgiven, you are loved, and you will always be a precious child of God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another, and why not take a few extra moments to greet one another and check in as well. Way to go on staying standing up. 845 did not do that well, I'll tell ya. Our worship continues with the singing of our hymn, Because It's True We Sing Together, We All Are One in Mission.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the lord help save comfort and defend us gracious lord Because we belong to one another in this community, in the world, and in the kingdom of God, we lift up these prayers for the sake of all who are in need. Maker of all, you are the architect of the solar system and part of your design is the changing seasons. This creates undeniable beauty and incredible diversity, but it also causes temperatures to drop and it causes harsh weather conditions. Protect your people who live without secure housing from the cold. Lord, in your mercy. God of divine love, you show us what it means to love others selflessly and without counting the cost. Grant peace to veterans and give courage to government officials who lead, serve, and protect. Lord, in your mercy. Listening, God, your beloved people call to you and you answer them. Hear the cries of those who are lonely, brokenhearted, and hopeless. We especially pray for those who have been in the hospital, Ron Gergen, Bill Miedema, Chuck Quam, Shelby Miller. Guard them in your loving care and lift up helpers like Stephen Ministers to listen as well. We also lift up Tony and Jean Lavasser as they mourn the death of Tony's father, Dale Taylor. Lord, in your mercy, God of the living, to you all are alive. But our community has suffered heartbreaking loss this week. We pray for the family and friends of student Barry and the whole Lincoln High School community. We pray that you would come alongside all who grieve and are left to cope with this senseless tragedy. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in hope, 
we lift our prayers to you, most gracious God, trusting that you have received them in your care. Amen. You may be seated. But our worship continues with the Kid Talk, so I invite all children to join me on the steps. Come on up and take a seat. Today we're going to talk about our gospel reading, which Pastor Tim or I will read in just a little bit. And this, friends, is not an easy story. It's hard enough for me to understand and for the other adults in the room to understand, but man, I just can't imagine. It's going to be a humdinger for you all, too. So here's the thing. When we have tough stories like this, Somebody once told me, don't worry so much about what's in the Bible that you don't understand. Just try your best to follow what you do understand. So sometimes there are things in the Bible. There are stories that are told in a way that um, the world was just so different back then, and it's hard to make sense of it and what it means for us today. But we know that in the Bible that we're taught to be kind to others, to love one another, and to give some of what we have to other people. And doing those things, even though we understand them, that's hard enough, isn't it? So we can focus on those things. Well, here's a story where Jesus had to remind some people of that lesson as well. Can you pick out who you think Jesus is in this picture? Can you just point? Yeah, you're exactly right. That's Jesus. And then these other guys... How do, they, um, how do they look? Do they look happy or do they look different? Oh, confused. What other feelings do you see on their face? That's a good example. Mad. Yeah, they're not very happy, are they? If you've done a First Communion instruction with me, they're the crabby people, right? Yep, the crabby people. And these are three prime examples of some crabby people. And they think, they believe differently than Jesus does, and they're trying to trip them up. But Jesus has a great answer. So here's our story. Jesus was walking with friends one day, a group of people known as the Sadducees, who did not believe in life with God after you die. They came up to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies, his brother should marry the widow if she has no children. Well, there were seven brothers and a wife. Every brother who married her died before any children were born. How sad. But when the widow dies, whose wife will she be, since she had been married to all seven brothers? Jesus sighed. <sighs> Don't worry about what will happen to the brothers or to the wife after they die and live with God. God has made a place for us to live forever. And that's amazing. For now, we live life on earth the way that God wants a, for now live life on earth the way that god wants you to live the end so even though things are hard for us to understand sometimes or for these sadducees to understand we do know how we're supposed to treat people don't we and we still don't manage to get it right all the time so we can focus on that and um, still try to understand the scriptures but really focus on the things we do understand we'll be off to a great start. So I hope that you'll pray with me. You can fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, and you can repeat after me in an echo prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your stories to help us understand how to follow you. When those stories are hard, give us your wisdom and your, and your strength, and most of all, most of all give, us give us your love, so that we can follow you. So follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus name we pray amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. The worship continues with our anthem.
It's in scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from Job. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 2 Thessalonians. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. 
He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember what I told you? that I told you these things when I was still with you? But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through the proclamation of the good news so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless, then the second and the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed. In the story about the bush where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of the living, there are so many questions about life and death that we cannot answer on our own. We wonder about things that are beyond what we can know. Help us to trust in your ever-present love in all things and in the promise that in life and in death we will always be your beloved children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. The Lord be with you. Thank you. We are here gathered together on this beautiful day in November. It is still beautiful, not too cold yet, but it's coming. But we are here in God's house on this second Sunday of our Belong series throughout this month of November. And it is a great privilege to talk about all the ways in which we belong to this family of God here at Our Saviors and the whole family of God throughout every time and place. We began the Belong series last Sunday on All Saints Sunday, 
a Sunday in which we remember those from our congregation who have died this past year. It is a meaningful service indeed, it always is. For when we think about those that we have loved who are gone now, well, those memories bring with it smiles and tears at times too. All Saints Sunday, it reminds me of so many things, so many feelings and emotions and so many people. We don't like to say goodbye to people that we love. Death seems to be so final, the last and great enemy of us all, one that brings with it many questions and a lot of uncertainties at times. And All Saints Sunday, well, it reminds us each year that even though we don't have all the answers to our questions all the time, of one thing we can be certain. Through Christ, we are all part of this family of God and one with all the saints of God of every time and place. We are a people of hope and promise, no matter what, united together in God's love and forgiveness and grace. And that is the good news that we proclaim on All Saints Sunday and on all Sundays, every time we gather here together in worship, for this is where we belong as God's people. Belong. That, that wonderful theme throughout this month, as we talked about this series, Belong, all of us agreed upon in our planning team that that All Saints Sunday was a great day to begin this series on. You see, we originally didn't plan to call it the Belong series, rather we talked about calling it the, the Loneliness series. For loneliness is the issue that we want to address with you in this month-long month conversation together. Loneliness affects so many people for many reasons, but one of the greatest causes of loneliness is when we have to face the death of someone that we love. And on All Saints Sunday, we remembered again that death is a very real part of our life. When someone we love dies, it, it, it changes things for us, and our life will never be the same. And oftentimes, not having that person with us anymore can make us feel terribly alone, even in a room full of people. So why is it then that we devote a, a whole Sunday each year to remembering someone that we love who has died? Why would we want to think about that again? Make it part of a Sunday morning worship service. Why would we want to bring that back to make ourselves feel bad again? No. Maybe another question to go along with this one is why do we have this big sign of death right up there in front all the time for us to see every time we gather together in this place of worship? For that too is a reminder of death that we see every time we come together. Someone we died loved, someone we loved died there too. A terrible, lonely death. Why would we want to be reminded of such a painful thing? Why bring up a bunch of difficult questions about life and death again and again, especially here in church? Well. Perhaps because this is absolutely the best place to wrestle with these questions together. These questions of faith. Questions. You know, a lot of us have questions. All of us have questions. Having questions, well, that's a matter of faith in itself. Jesus was never afraid to wrestle with the questions people asked of him. Even today, there are people in the gospel story asking Jesus questions. Only these people are asking their questions for a different reason than you and I, I might be asking ours today. Let's consider this story again of questions for a few moments together. These people that came to Jesus called themselves Sadducees. They were members of a Jewish sect of Jesus' time that denied the resurrection of the dead. And they were always giving Jesus a bad time for one thing or another. Always giving him a bad time because of all of his talk about salvation and, and God's kingdom and eternal life and, 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 and God's love. All these crazy ideas, you know, that at least in their eyes, that he had. And so one day when Jesus was teaching a crowd about all these things once again and reminding all the people that came to him about God's love for them, 
They came to him with a question. Teacher Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies having a wife but no children, the man must take the wife and raise up the children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children, and the second and the third took her, and likewise all seven left no children and died. And afterwards the woman also died. So, in the resurrection, Jesus, whose wife will this woman be? For the seven had her as a wife. They didn't want an answer. This wasn't a question, this was a trap. This was a sole aim to make Jesus look bad, to argue with him, to force him into one particular school of thought, to embarrass him, and to divide his followers. That was all their intent. These Sadducees were one of several parties within Judaism, and they were the priestly class, mostly made up of aristocrats and wealthy people, and they were theologically conservative. And scripture for them consisted only of the five books of Moses. No teaching was authoritative unless it was found in the Pentateuch. And they found no doctrine of resurrection in the books of Moses. Those are the Sadducees. We hear a lot about them. But the other group was the Pharisees. And they were another religious group that Jesus dealt with from time to time. But they not only included the prophets and the writings in their scriptures, but they also believed in the authority of oral tradition. And in the oral tradition, there was a basis for the belief of the resurrection. And so the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they wrestled with this stuff and argued with each other all the time. A little bit of church history. Now, that gives you a little bit better idea of who the Sadducees were. And we can see that their only reason for asking Jesus this question today about the resurrection, which they didn't believe in, was to trip him up and divide his followers into different camps. But here we go again. They were trying to trap Jesus. And Jesus traps them. Jesus begins to pick apart their misunderstanding of the scriptures. And then he goes on to trap them in their own attempt to play God with their questions. How can they attempt to understand all there is to know about God and the resurrection, which they didn't believe in, from their own limited human understanding? They thought they had all of the answers to the questions of God and God's kingdom, but Jesus quickly proves that they don't. It's fun to see Jesus best them in this story, but as they spar together, the questions that the Sadducees ask, they start to stir up the questions that we ourselves ask about heaven and the things to come. No, we don't ask our questions with the intent of the Sadducees in this story, but we do ask our questions of God. Those questions about heaven and what is to come. And sometimes we ask our questions from the midst of our loneliness and sorrow. What will heaven be like, Jesus? Someone I love has died, Lord. What do they see now? Life can be so hard at times, God. Will heaven be a better place like you've promised it to be? I sure hope so. Because life hasn't been always easy for me. Even though we might be strong in our faith, and confident in God's promises for us, the questions we have about the resurrection and heaven and the reassurance of things to come are questions all of us have, especially when we go through difficult times. In today's story, Jesus doesn't give us all the answers to these questions, but he does remind us of one thing. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For all live to God. What does this mean for you today? What does it mean to know that you belong here to this family of God, to this God of the living? What does all this that brings us here each week have to say to us? As we were reminded of last Sunday, we belong to something, 
someone that is stronger than the power of death and stronger than all the uncertainties and fears of this life. We belong to the one who faced the loneliness of the cross so that the loneliness of death would never have the last word over us. We belong to this body of Christ, this living reminder of God's love that reminds us that we never walk this road of life alone, no matter where it is we find ourselves today. We belong to this congregation of faith, this, this church of Christ of every time and place that is a light of hope within a world that sometimes seems so dark. We belong here, together, you and me, with all of our questions, with all of our uncertainties and struggles, with all of our joys, with all of our sorrows, with all that we are, we belong here together, you and me. You have a place here, here in God's house, where you can celebrate this gift of life with one another. We have a place here in God's house where we are welcome no matter who we are or what it is we are going through. We are welcomed and loved, no strings attached because God says so. We belong here. And God understands what brought you here today to this place. For no one understands you more than the God who would go to that place so that you would feel welcome in this place. You never have to wonder if this house of God is a place where you belong, for by God's grace, you do. Thanks be to God for this place where we belong. Please stand with me if you are able. 
We confess our belief together. This belief that bonds us together that we all share. And I hope that you will claim with confidence our belief in the resurrection of the body. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our worship continues the giving of our offering, and I invite you to direct your attention to the video, which tells us more about Stephen Ministry, and especially from the care receiver's perspective. For the past several weeks, We've had the opportunity to listen to several of our Stephen ministers as they have reflected upon how Stephen ministry has blessed their life. Now I'd like to share a few comments from those who have received a Stephen minister and how this ministry has been a blessing to them. After losing our daughter, we lost my mom and then we lost my husband. And also um, a loss, he took his own life. And when you look at those three different types of death, you really realize there's a major difference. My mom was almost 96 and in her home until the last three weeks, the last 13 days. And it's like you're grateful for the long life and you're grateful for each of the other lives. But the loss is different. And so after the loss of my husband, I was paired up with Ann Anderson. And it was great because she lost her husband in the same manner. And we just connected totally, and it's a very helpful um, conversation. I think it's important that you verbalize um, everything that's within inside of you. Our faith is very, very important to us. Um, I think that along with that and in that conversation, it helps us to move through in a healthy way. You never get over it, but the Stephen Ministry program was excellent. When my husband, Art, became more ill, for some reason I had not asked him if he wanted a Stephen Minister, uh, even though we'd both been part of the Stephen Ministry's training and had done that ourselves. But one time uh, we met Joyce Cotts here at the church when she was a parish nurse, and she asked Art, would you like a Stephen minister? And he said, without any hesitation, that'd be very nice. And it worked out very well for him. He was matched up with just the perfect person, and he was no longer able to share all the ideas he had in his head in a, a larger group. And so to have somebody to visit with one-on-one -on -one was something he really looked forward to. When crisis and pain came into my life with my husband's Parkinson's disease, I was asked at church by the parish nurse if I would like a Stephen minister. I'm so grateful that I did as difficulties became easier to handle and I was able to share them with others. It is confidential and prayerful. I thank God for our Stephen ministers, families, pastors, and friends. God uses the journey to teach us faith. The second year, Jim's health developed into a 12-month diagonal downslide, finally back to the VA hospital in December, where he passed away quietly on the Sunday afternoon, surrounded by his family. His funeral was one week before Christmas Day. How ironic that Jim was to spend Christmas with the Christ child born to us. Our Savior's Church responded with prayers, gifts of food, a knitted prayer shawl, and many condolences. Thank you to the Stevens Ministry for the support they have provided. Thank you to Pastor Tim, who guides us all.
Please stand as you are able. We pray together. God, our provider, everything we have comes from you, and your goodness fills our cup to overflowing. Receive the gifts we give back to you in service to others. Bless these gifts that they may be sing to those in need. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We are gathered together here around God's word, and we are united by this meal, joined to the body of Christ. And every time we come to this table, we remember that it was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks for it. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to this table of God, for it is here that you belong. Be filled with a life of God's grace and God's love. You may be seated.
Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace.